Okay, we're going to uh, walk through the uh, lab two today, the um, visualize, visualizing data with ggplot today. So um, today we're going to run through the view client today. If you're doing it the other way, that's okay, but I just wanted to show you the whole walkthrough of how it works if you do use that client. So I already installed VPN, I already installed the client. Um, there's other videos that show you a little bit how to do that. Um, although your Google can actually work to show you how to do that. But once we do, we now have a virtual desktop running. And as I showed in that other video, I'm gonna make it my whole screen so that my computer looks and acts like it's um, this machine, not my own machine. Um, another thing that I like to do is I actually take this and I click this little pin and then that goes up high so it's kind of out of the way. All right, so I opened our studio um, and I haven't yet opened my project so I'm gonna do that through the Y drive um, just to get to that project that I've been using in the past at 220. This is spring 2019 and that looks like a pretty good place. Okay, so there's three different ways you can access um, Lab 2, you can either go into the U drive, click on uh, student files, click on MT for mathematical sciences. My name's Alberts, this is STAT220. And if you, that once you do that, you can then just run Lab 2, which is in as an RMD file. Um, notice that it is sort of annoying that it seems like it doesn't know that RMD files go with R, so you'd have to teach it that. Um, but anyway, that way actually works pretty well to do that. Um, the other thing you can do is go onto the Google Classroom page and just go to the Google Doc. In some ways, this might be the easiest, um, even though it is sort of the less high-tech way. Um, and all you do is you copy and paste that from the Google Doc into a new R Markdown window. So remember, R Markdown is this third one. It's maroon. Um, you click the plus sign to make a thing, and then you click R Markdown to make an R Markdown file. When you do that, you can give it a name. This is Lab 2. Um, GG plus, or name it whatever you want. Um, the author one isn't such a big deal because we're going to copy and paste um, all that YAML code that we talked about before into here. So um, here you go. So once you get that in there, you'll want to save that now um, into your project folder as lab2.rmd. And if you're doing it on a um, computer, it'll automatically put the prefix, but otherwise just dot .rmd is an R markdown file. Okay, and you can see it right over here. So um, now we have that going. One other thing I want to mention, I mentioned before how the um, R Studio page hasn't been updated yet at Truman for the summer. And so one of the things of that is that the R Studio CRAN, CRAN stands for the uh, code repository, which is where we get packages from. Um, that um, we're not in compliance with something with certificates or dates or something. Anyway, the way to fix that easy, most easily is you go to global options and you click on packages and then you just change this. And then there's mirrors all over the world. The one I like to use is in the USA and I like to use one at Iowa State, although it doesn't really matter. Um, none of these are so far away that it actually matters, but Iowa State is probably the closest one to us. Okay, so back to our code. So um, the way the lab works is just as before, it has all of the uh, materials there and you can see what's going on um, to do that. Now to start with, we're gonna make just a blank chunk and um, down here in line 23. And remember to run a chunk, you just click this little green arrow next to it. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna load the tidyverse package for us. And that'll be good because that has ggplot, which is the package we're going to use. So now we're going to um, look at some data. So Dr. Kim, one of the professors in our department, she gives a quick survey at the beginning of STAT 190 every semester. And then she uses that data throughout the semester. It's actually kind of cool the way she does that. So um, if you're on the virtual desktop, you can actually um, access this file um, from the U drive. Otherwise, it's um, attached to the Google Classroom file so you can download it to your own computer. 
Um, this read.csv, once you've downloaded it, is uh, just a command that does that. You can actually go over here and do import data set. And if you use base um, R, you can go into that and then you can find the file that you want to import. Um, anyway, once we have that, um, we're now ready to go. The first thing we do is I always import data multiple times. And what I do is I make a copy of it because I'm very worried about changing the original data set. And so what I typically do is we make um, a copy of the copy of the file. So um, we're going to go through and uh, run this whole chunk, which goes from 32 to 53. And um, it's actually doing more, I guess, than I just talked about. But what we did is we downloaded the file, we imported it, we made a copy of it, and then we made a copy of that copy. The next thing we did is we turned a few variables into factor variables. We talked before about data as having three, more than that, but three that we're going to talk about, uh, numeric data, character variables, and factor variables. And for no particular reason, her data was saved with a lot of her variables as characters, but we want them to be factors, which are categories, so that we can do analysis of it. Then the last thing in the chunk we did is we ran the summary statistic. And then the summary just shows us all the variables that are in her data set and then what the results of that are. And you can see the ones that we turned into categorical variables, which were the um, politically liberal, religiously liberal, or socially liberal. Those questions were recoded as factors instead of being numbers. And that'll be actually um, nice because you don't actually think of a five-point survey scale as being actual numbers in that sense. Okay, then um, we can go ahead and uh, do our simple plot. So this is a simple plot in base R. This is what we did last time. And if we do that, we make a nice little plot and it looks like that. So what we're going to do instead, though, is we're going to use this grammar of graphics that we've talked about um, in order to make this graph a little bit prettier. First, we should look at the graph and say, unsurprisingly, that um, in general, people who are taller tend to weigh more. But the graph isn't very pretty, um, and we'd like to find ways to make that a little bit snazzier. So according to our GM uh, ggplot, our grammar of graphics, um, we need to specify three things. We need to specify our data set, the geom, and the mapping for the variables. And so if we do that in ggplot, you can see the code is actually a little bit longer. So ggplot and then the data, and then we do geom point mapping gets these aesthetic values x equals height and y equals weight. And when we do that, we get this plot, which you can see is just a little bit nicer. Um, it gives a little warning that they removed 25 rows because those are people who didn't give both their height and their weight. Now, just to, to look at it, you would say, well, gosh, that looks harder. The simple plot command looked actually pretty easy. But with this ggplot command, we can actually start building very fancy plots very quickly, um, much faster than we can do in the regular plot command. So um, certainly one thing that people would talk about is that um, the gender effect. So people were asked to identify their gender, and it's easy to then just add one more aesthetic element to the mapping, which is color or gender. And so when we do that, we now get um, red and green uh, dots, and then the person who didn't give their gender is a blue dot. Um, now, there are ways to go in and fix that color, but you can see very quickly we've already added something uh, pretty nice. Um, we could add something else. We could say, do you think left or right-handed has an effect? And we can add those in. Um, and you can now see that the shape of the dots are now different for people who are right-handed or left-handed. Okay, and so you can start to make very full uh, graphs doing that. Um, the next command is for that is facet wrap. So now we're going to split left-handed and right-handed uh, using facet wrap. And so now we've put people who are right-handed over here, people who are left-handed over here, and people who are both over here. So you can see that actually without making anything much more fancy than what we did before, you can start to add um, really complicated elements to your chart. Now, you can also add a stat. So a stat is something that's calculated instead of just raw data. And the one that we're gonna use is stat smooth. Um, and a smoother is um, just an approximation that you can put on a line. We're gonna use a linear one. We're gonna talk about regression a little bit later. But um, this idea that we wanna add um, 
things into there. So stat smooth is just a quick command that does it. You can see we put the AESs in here again, and now we're going to get the different uh, lines that approximate based off handedness. So we can see here the plot we made and the color of the dots is still gender, F, M, and other. The color of the lines is now left-handed or right-handed. And you can see there's not really a difference between left-handed and right-handed people. Now, um, there's a shortcut because you can see we had to put the same thing here. If you're gonna use the same mapping throughout a problem, you can actually put the mapping up above in the top line. So this line here, line 133, is literally the same as um, the one we had in 123, except now, because we put color equals gender, it's now going to do the same colors for both the dots and the lines. So you couldn't do this if you were going to make the colors um, of the dots by gender and the color of the lines by handedness. But if you're going to use the same for both, you can see very quickly that we do that. And unsurprisingly, um, the slopes of men and women are actually different um, between the heights of uh, men and women. Okay, so um, we can also do um, bar charts. So here we have um, the question of, um, do you identify yourself as religiously conservative or liberal? And that was a five point scale, minus two to plus two, minus two was conservative, uh, plus two was liberal. And what you see is, um, here is our simple bar chart, which again, the only command we needed was geom var added into our ggplots that we had from before. And we could start adding a uh, fill to that to say, gosh, um, how does socially conservative liberal interact with religiously? And you wouldn't be surprised to think that there's a relationship between those two people who are conservative in one way tend to be conservative in the other way. And this colored bar chart shows that. So the people who are minus two on um, religiously uh, conservative or liberal <coughs> tended to also be socially conservative or liberal. People who were neutral tended to also be neutral, and people who were liberal tended to also be liberal. This was conservative. Um, so um, we can do that. We could also use dodge, which is another command to come in and add even a little bit more fancy. So now we've made a separate bar chart within each of our categories of our bar chart. And um, we can do that. Notice that we use can do uh, position equals fill. And now we've made a stacked bar chart where it's now out of 100% rather than out of raw counts. Um, we call that a relative frequency plot when you were in STAT 190. So what you can see is we can very quickly add um, some pretty fancy stuff to ggplots pretty quickly. And we'll talk a little bit more about that but for the most part, <coughs> excuse me, the way to get better at ggplots is to do it. The lab has some questions that you're going to be answering as you walk through it. The homework, um, in general, homework takes what you did in a lab and it gives it to you in a little more open-ended way with a little bit fancier data set. Um, you might have to do a little bit of Googling to figure out what you want with that. ggplot has a <coughs> cheat sheet, just like um, um, our markdown did. So you can go into the cheat sheet and you can get this from our studio and print that out. This one is green, uh, the other one was red. And all those commands like geom underscore whatever, right? It's not like you have to remember all the different kinds of plots, but you can see here that there's geom point. Geom jitter asks a little, adds a little wiggle into the plot. We'll do that a little bit later for some things. Um, and here's box plots, here's violin plots, any kind of plot you can imagine. And then for those other things like stats, changes to scales, if you wanted to add a log scale to your data, you could do that. But you can add whatever it is that you need pretty easily. And the phone's ringing, so I'm going to end this video anyway. <laughs>